Okay, so in this video, I want to deal with the uh, strip footings. In the model, yeah, I've tried to capture a typical scenario of what strip footings might look like. Um, they are, are very simple and uh, they're very repetitive, so it doesn't matter actually how the layout is, they all end up being either stepped, uh, has a 90 degree, has a T section, interacts with with uh, you know pad footings or retaining walls, but it's 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 the same. Um, so what I'm going to do is I am going to uh, model all of this, and we'll see how we deal with the different cases. Also, um, just for reference, for for if you haven't watched it in the previous videos, we've got uh, uh, pad footings done in detail, uh, three different methods. So I'm not going to spend too much time on that. I am going to reinforce these just for the sake of completeness, so we can see how the strip footings interact. Now, before we get started, I just want to drag this image into view. This is typical details that uh, I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with, especially in the Australasian environment. Um, this is typical details that we'll get on consulting engineering's drawings, and most of the consultants in uh, New Zealand, Australia would use these sort of details. Um, basically, it shows the intent of how do we deal with a corner joint, how do we deal with a T-section, how do we deal with steps, how do we deal with slopes, and so forth. But uh, I think what we want to do in this uh, in this video is I want to, to build in a bit of variety. So I'm not going to stick to these details religiously, but I just want to show where the information comes from. Uh, for the corner bars, we will follow their guide by putting in some corner bars uh, that ties up this cage. You can see that the vertical, if I can call it the vertical, the vertical strip footing, the cage stops short there. The horizontal continues through to the end of the footing, and then they've got some lacing bars or corner bars that sort of stitches them all together. For the T, they've also got the corner, or can't really call it corner, but they've got these lacing bars uh, that, that stitch them together. But what I'm going to do is I want to deviate from this from this detail in the sense that I want to pull the main reinforcement through. And because they're in the same layer, they're obviously going to clash. So I'll show how we deal with joggled bars or J bars, or even some people refer to them as cranked bars. So we'll do that. And then uh, for the step footings, we'll deal with the Z bars as they've shown them. Yeah, uh, some people find that challenging too. So what I'll do is I'll just uh, close that and we'll get stuck into the, the video as such. So what I'll do is I'll just quickly uh, reinforce the pad footing so we have a reference to work from. So over in our Rebot tab, we can select our crossing and uh, the habit of loading your defaults just to uh, um, sort of uh, load any settings you might have made um, just to cancel them out. So what we want for this on a clean slate is we want to start with 16s. For the color, I'm going to stick to red. I'm happy with that, or the class rather. Um, for the start and end, we're not going to change that. For the creation method, we'll pick a target spacing of 200. So we're happy with all of that. So what I'll do is I'll just hover over the footing again, click on it. I will not accept all of it. I will accept that vertical and this vertical, which creates a U-bar or a double L as it's known here. So we leave the base open at the top so we can get a bit of, better visual of what's going to happen with the uh, strip footings. So once I've got that, I can just accept that. And while the command is still active, I can hover over the other direction, do the same, pick this side, holding my shift key, pick the other side and accept that. So that pretty much gives us a grit in both directions of 200 millimeters. And um, then for the horizontals, these, I am actually gonna drop the the um, diameter to a 12 millimeter bar. And I'm also gonna change the color to a green color, the class to a green color. And for the distribution, the creation method, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go for number. And the number of bars I wanna create is two. I also wanna offset them, say for instance, 80 millimeters. I think 80 will be good enough. If we do 80 top, 80 bottom. And then if once we've got those settings, if I hover over the, the um, footing, I will accept that. And you can see the, um, the two green bars that was uh, inserted for us, 80 millimeters from the top, 80 body. Now, now, if you look at this one, the one at the bottom, you can see it's encroaching in the in the um, in the um, arc there of the other bar. It's because I'm forcing I'm forcing a dimension here, yeah, and that dimension is a star dimension. I could just up that to say, for instance, 150 millimeters, and that'll get rid of that. Um, but I've also got to see where it comes in with the strip footing, so it's not going to interfere with the strip footing at all, and that should be okay. So that pretty much takes care of the pad footing, and while I'm there, I just want to also switch off my leg faces so we don't see them. 
Um, the only thing we need to do with this is to click on them and to split them. And I'll just move this this uh, guideline out of the way a little bit. We got to split them so um, it becomes double L's or L bars all the way around. So I'll just pick the middle of each bad footing quickly. And I'll pick the middle there, and then lastly I'll pick the middle on this side here, there somewhere. Okay, so what we end up with is a pad footing that's got um, four corner bars that lap with each other all around. And if we click on it, right click, inquire, we can see that it's just uh, eight bars of exactly the same size. So it's a single line in the bedding schedule. So it works quite well. Um, that pretty much takes care of the pad footing. Now, since we have a lot of the same here, we can go back to our previous method. And if we click the edit uh, menu uh, and we go or the click, click on the ribbon, the edit, and then go to the batch editor, we can then as our source SMD select, pick this pad footing. It should load all the others, which it does. And then once it's loaded that, we can just say, copy the details and that just like that it reinforces the whole lot so that takes care of the bad footings for us so with the strip footing um, we can start at this one strip footing one so what I want to do is I want to reinforce this one and I want to make use of the uh, copy to object function and reinforce the majority of the others with it so we can actually see how quickly you can run through through this so so what i'm going to do is let's go to rebar and we go to our crossing bar and again because we made a lot of changes here i'm going to load my default settings make sure we are dealing with a 12 millimeter tower stirrup i want to change the color or the class to a five and then i'll use a target spacing of say 300 so it's just a bit bigger and i think the rest can stay as is so if i hover over this and accept it as a ligature and say okay it will pretty much um, uh, fill in the ligatures for us but I can see there we're quite close to the edge there and close to the edge there so what I'm going to do in this this case is I'm going to click on the bar and I'm going to adjust my start and end instead of the auto calculated I'm going to make this 100 millimeters and in here I'm also going to make that 100 sorry that didn't go down well 100 and I'm going to say okay so that looks a lot better. If we look at it like that, that looks a lot better. And then what I'm going to do is I'll click on these and just we've got to deal with the end condition here, say what sort of end condition we want. So if we go to our end detail, make sure that we've uh, loaded our defaults just in case. So at the moment, um, it's going to be putting on a hook of 90 degrees, which is what we don't want. We want a hook of 135 degrees. And I think the rest is all good. So what we can do is just hover over the edge of the concrete where this um, is expected. So we can just click there and it will add a hook for us on both ends of the bar. Um, and that pretty much wraps up the uh, ligatures. So for the main reinforcement in that uh, strip footing, we can go to longitudinal bars. And for the longitudinal bars, what we're going to do is we're going to select a 16 millimeter main bar. For the class, we will select, let's say, purple. That's just for the visual effect. For the offset, we're going to delete the two offsets and get Tekla to auto calculate. For the creation method, we will use the number of. And for the number of reinforcement, we will pick the four, as we saw in the detail four bars top, four bars bottom. For the rest, I think is okay. So now if we hover over the section, we can pick the bottom chord and we can also pick the top chord because they're similar. And if I then say accept, it will give us four bars in the bottom and four bars in the top. And just like that, um, we've dealt with that. Now, the detail doesn't call for any sidebars, but I would like to put at least one sidebar just to show you how I deal in rebar sets with a single bar. So what we can do is, if we go over to longitudinal bars again, we still have our settings as before, but what I want to do here is instead of having four bars, we will now have one bar. And for the start and end offset, now if you if you if you just if I I'll show you, I'll just if I just select that one side and I say okay, Tekla actually puts a bar right there at the beginning, and that's not quite what we want. If I pick that bar now, 
you can see the start and end offset. It tried to auto calculate something. It's very difficult if you only have one bar, but we know that this strip footing, and I'll click it and just show you if we hover over here, the strip footing is 300 millimeters. So the center of it's 150. So if we click on this bar, and we change our start offset to 150 and we keep our end offset clear so Tekla doesn't auto calculate on that and we say modify that then gives us a bar right smack bang in the center of our of our um, ligature there and what we can do now is we can just hover over it and pick the other side and while the settings is still in play we can just say okay and it does it on that side first as well now that pretty much takes care of the main reinforcement apart for the fact that they stop um, on the edge here, what we need to do is pull them in, into the into the um, into the uh, pad footing. So the way we're going to do it is um, the, the 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 most the best way to do it is to actually add an end modifier onto the um, bar. So if we click the bar, we can go over to end modifier. Make sure we load our standards again. And for the type, we want to say nothing. There's no hook and there's no crank on this. But if we go down, we can say under the length adjustment, the adjustment type, what we want to do is we want an end offset. And the offset we want is we want these bars to project 300 millimeters into the base. And once we've got that, we can just hover over the end of this. And just like that, it extends the main bars into the pad footing. Now, once we've got that, we can also... Um, um, while I've got it selected, I shouldn't have unselected, but while I've got it selected, we might as well just apply that same end modifier on this side. And just to show you that end modifiers can be copied, if I click on that bar, select this end modifier, and also select the one on this side by using control, we can then say right click, copy special, copy linear, and then pick the bottom of the strip footing and then click the top of the strip footing. We should then get a positive 300 in the Z, and if we say copy, it copies those um, it copies those uh, end modifiers to the top, and you can see it's extended the top bars. You can see there's the end modifier; it extends the top top bar. Right, so I'm not going to worry about these um, middle bars, as you know they were just um, there to show you how single bars work. So now that we've done that, we've noticed that in the rest of there's a lot of SF. Uh, FS1, so we might as well copy them around. So the, the quickest way of doing that is again with our batch editor, because um, if you copy uh, to another, you could copy to another object, but it's like sort of random, they're in different, uh, different orientations. So I find this much, much easier. So if we pick that as our source, it picks up all the other FS1s. So what we can do is just say copy. And just like that, we've deal, we've uh, reinforced all the others. So now, um, for the other straight uh, straight bars, we can pretty much do exactly the same. What we can do is we can click each one of these rebar sets. Make sure we get them all. We've got all these rebar sets, and now instead of using the editor, what I'm going to do is right click and say copy special to another object. And down the bottom, your tickler is asking for a source object. So this is our source that concrete and now we can pick a destination so what we can do is we can pick this one for a destination object not found obviously not clicked it properly so that's our destination so it's 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 done that it's asking for another destination we might as well click on this one so it's done that we've got to deal with uh, the offset yeah um, and then um, we also have this one so we can reinforce this one this is an L we'll do that differently we also have this straight one that you can populate and this is L, it's differently, and we also have this straight, so we might as well populate that. So just like that, we've uh, we've we've pretty much reinforced most of it. Now we've just got to do a sanity check and make sure that all the ends are correct. So this one protrudes in here, which is correct. If we go over to the other side, we've got projection there, that's correct. In this one, we've got projection there. We also have a projection there, that's cool. So in here, we've got all of this projecting. There we've got projecting, but yeah, we don't want projecting. We just want the bars to stop. So if I click on the bar... Click on the modifier and just simply delete it. Gets rid of that one. Click on this one. Click on the modifier, delete it. That takes care of that one. So that's pretty much done. Um, on this one, uh, we've got the same scenario. Yeah, if I click on this, on the modifier, delete. Uh, the top one, on the modifier, delete. And that pretty much takes care of that one. We've just got to check the other end. 
that one projects in that's nice so it looks like we've got all of that sorted now the only thing that's left is we need to deal with the intersection yeah at the moment you can see it's clashing there so we can deal with that in a minute uh, let's deal with it now so it's done so in this case if we click on this bar there's already a modifier and that modifier um, is set to uh, just an extension so what we can do with this is we can change this what we can say is we can say first of all let's just zero that one out and for the end top we're going to use a crank and we're going to use a standard crank if we do say modify this what Tekla does is it goes back to the original end of the of the uh, strip footing and then it applies a standard cog which uh, a standard crank length which is 700 as you can see there in the in the property pane is 700 so what we need to do is push this back so what we can do first of all is this is a 600 wide um, footing so what we can do here is we can say we've got a custom crank length of say um, let's try 600 we go with 600 let's see where we get out so if we say modify that that will shorten that up and then just to push it back what we can do then is go say end offset and push this back um, uh, 550 just to account for cover if I do that you can see that the it's adhering to the cover on this side nicely it's pushed those bars over the others and the crank is there now you can obviously play with these values to get the crank exactly where you want it you can even push it closer closer to um, what I mean by that is if you if you um, say the crank length here should be 550 for instance you can see how the crank sort of just gets closer to the uh, other end now that we've got that we also know and I'll just click off to unselect the bar if you click on that we've also got a modifier there so what happens is if I click both of them and I pick this modifier I can then go to the paint tool at the bottom here if I click on the paint tool I can then hover over this modifier and say modify and just like that it's applied that settings to the top bar and all of a sudden we've got perfect integration between the two faces there as the T and that pretty much covers the T intersection um, as I discussed before we'll have to do the same on this side once we've reinforced uh, this L beam um, on this side let's reinforce this L beam and we'll use rebar sets as well so for this what I'm going to do is um, I will pick a rebar I will pick a crossing bar and I'll just reset my values again to make sure that I haven't got some dodgy um, settings uh, we will run with the catalog and pick the uh, N12 tie or ligature we will pick our class 5 for the distribution we will select 300 again now obviously you don't have to do this all the time you can save a setting for that and just pick that setting but um, you know for this for this tutorial I like to type in the stuff because it sort of drills in practice it keeps you on your toes with the with the property pane and you sort of know what to look for um, it's 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 a really good habit to get into in the beginning until you're so comfortable that you can just use your standard uh, you know saved away settings so in here I'm going to click the section I want to deal with so I didn't click properly you can just click it there but before I select um, you know except to apply that because this is one polybeam, Tekla is going to try and pick up the faces of both sides, and that's not quite what we want. We want this just to apply to the corner there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this uh, guideline location adjustment, and you can see where the faces is that I'm talking about. It's trying to go around the corner. That's not what we want to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this, and I'm going to pull it back far enough so we come to the inside of that corner. If I go to that corner, it's still going to select that face. So I have to just sort of come inside that corner so it doesn't pick that face and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to accept that and then while I'm in the command hover over this side again engage the um, location line adjustment and on this side again I'm going to drag that to just beyond that point and accept that so that will give us our two rebar set ranges and to get it theoretically correct as per the detail we'll go into plan view control P and what I'll do is I'll select this one first now what's important here is that you have your faces on otherwise you don't see all your handles because what we want to do is we want to manipulate the handles um, if I go over to the rebar tool uh, menu and to the visibility uh, leg faces and I, and I make sure that they're on and I then click on the bar you can see all the faces on now these multiple these multiple nodes here there's multiple nodes including our guideline and, and so forth so what we want to do 
what we want to do is we want to click on this bar and then holding our alternate key and select all of those nodes and you'll see down the bottom you had selected 14 handles and then what we want to do is right click say move special move linear pick this handle and move it to the corner of the concrete and say move and that pretty much um, deals with that end we're going to stop it short so you see if i click there we want to stop this one short there if we go to this other one we can do exactly the same holding the alternate key select over all these handles and again down the bottom you have 13 handles this time don't know why it's different let me just select again and uh, alternate click all of them it's 13 i'm just going to accept that this correct right click move special linear and then we want to go from this side all the way to the end and say move and that takes care of that now if we go in 3d we can see what we ended up with the one the horizontal one extending all the way to the end and the vertical one stopping short of it if i click on it you can see what it's done with the um, leg faces now it's pretty much um, exactly what we wanted so um the only other thing that we need to do now is if we look at this first beam we did we started 100 millimeters um, off the start and 100 millimeters on the end offset i also want to apply that setting to this l so what i'll do is i'll click both of them and while I've got both of them selected, I'll set the start offset to 100. I'll also set the, the um, end offset to 100, and I'll modify that. So that sort of takes care of that. It just gives us space for this main bar to actually run in if it needs to without clashing with the, um, with the ligatures. But, I mean, it's something we can refine, but just as a first stop, that's what we'll do. So um, we also need to deal with the end conditions here. And at this point, I'm going to switch off my faces again. If I reselect the bar, I can then go to end detail. Again, just load up our defaults to make sure nothing is uh, dodgy. Uh, for the hook type, this time I'll select the 135 degree hook. And I'll hover over the edge of the concrete. And that will pick up both the bar ends. So it applies the 135 degrees to both. I'll, I'll quit out of the command at that point. And what I'll do is I'll select this one. And again, what I'll do is I'll go to end detail. We've still got our settings. Hover over the edge of this and apply that to there. Now, um, this this end detail line does extend to the end. Um, but, you know, it, it, it's got no influence over the bar because the bar, the, 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 the guide stops here, but also the faces stop here. So it, it's got no, no influence there. But... If it does worry you, what you can do is just hover over it and you'll see there's a little arrow that pops up. Just look in this area. There's a little arrow that pops up and you can just purely drag that arrow down to that corner and that will take care of that. And now if you click on it, you'll see your guideline actually just stops in line with your faces and everything. So now that's sort of the perfect solution. So we've dealt with the um, ligatures in this regard. So all we need to do now is deal with the main reinforcement. So for the longitudinal reinforcement, Again, yeah, what we're going to do is we're going to pick our 16s as main. We're going to change our color to a 7 as before, or our class. We want to delete our start and end offsets. For our creation method, we're going to select the number of bars, and the number is going to be 4. And I think that deals it. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pick the section, but I'm going to pick the bottom and the top at the same time. So it creates those two at the same time. And I'm going to say, OK, that takes care of top and bottom. And then I'm also going to go over to this end, pick the top and the bottom and say create. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to change my number of bars to one. And I am going to change my offset to 150 as before and they take the calculate the end offset i'm going to hover over this section pick the two side faces and say okay that takes care of the middle bars there and if i click yeah pick the two side faces and say okay and that takes care of the middle bars there so with all of that that's pretty much done for those so what i want to do now is just wrap up a few things here now Unlike we did with the crossing bars where we had a control over our guideline, in terms of the longitudinal, we don't. So if I if I just switch on my leg faces and I click on these bars, you'll see that it's actually included those faces as well, which we don't want. Um, so what we can do is we can just click on this node, delete it, 
click on this node, delete it. That will give us like a sharp point there. Hover over this edge, this edge, grab this arrow and pull it to that point. And that pretty much, you can now see those bars stop short there. They don't extend over anymore. We'll do the same with the bottom bars. As soon as we click them, we can pick this node and that node if you want and delete them both. And then again, just dra drag this sharp point over to, to that end there. So that pretty much takes care of that. Now these, we do want them to extend all the way to the end there, but we don't really care for this face. So what I'm going to do with this face, I'm gonna again just going to select this and this node and delete it. And on the other end, what I'm going to do is this time take the inner one and just drag it all the way to there. I'm going to do the same with the bottom. Click on the bottom bar, delete this, these two nodes, press delete, and then drag the bottom arrow to the corner again. And that pretty much, uh, you know, gets the faces perfect. We also still, if you look at this inner bar, yeah, that is okay. And if we look at the outer bar, yeah, that is still wrong. So what we can do with this is, again, we can grab um, a leader. Let's see if we can get this to work and to the inside point there. And that brings the face in and you can see that stops stop sort. So that's exactly what they have in the detail. What we do know, what we need to add now on this one is the actual corner bars, the lacing bars that they were talking about. So what we're going to do for that is, I'll just zoom in here. Yeah? We are going to trigger the more tool and go to the point input. Make sure we're dealing with linear. And then for the settings, we're going to use 16, that's correct. We're going to get rid of that for now. For the number of, we're going to say we need two bars, two on top of each other. So we're looking into the vertical direction. And let's just leave that by now. So, so what I'm going to do here is I am going to draw just roughly. I'm going to draw an L bar onto that corner today somewhere. We'll, we'll deal with the length of the leg now. And once I've got that, middle mouse to accept the shape. And then rotate around and now take this asking for the position so what we do is we're going to go from there to there that's pretty much your your coverage of your of your rebar so um you can see we take this put that l bar in so if we click on this bar we can see that it's chucked you know if we look at if we look at this face it's on layer three so it's it's already detected there's a there's a layer one there's a layer two it's not picked a layer three to make sure that we we sort of avoid other bars but but we actually do want that in the second layer so what i'm going to do is click on the face and then manipulate the three to a two so you can see that actually comes up to the ligature it is clashing at the top and the bottom so that will be solved by the by the um by the end and start offset by these values. So at the moment it's 63. So what we can do is let's just try a 75 in there. I'm just sort of guessing a value. Now, if we say 75, you can see that that sort of fits in nicely there. Maybe even an 80 would have worked better. Gets us closer to the to the um, the other bar. If I say 80 there and I say 80 there, uh, uh, 80, 80. Uh, oh, that didn't do much of a Oh, sometimes it will not make much of a difference if it can't fit it in. You know, you have to go to a bigger or a smaller value. So, like, if we go, actually, it, I should have gone the opposite. Let's try 70. We were at 75. Let's go 70. I went the wrong way. That's much better. So, if we look at 70, that works quite nice. Now, you will get a bit of interference here, but just bear in mind, we do have room to move there. And on site, they will just make it fit in there wherever it is. So, I wouldn't get you know you know worried about that for, you know too much but what we can do now is we can click on this and we can add if we want a specific length for a leg we can actually add a modifier to this so what i'm going to do is i'll leave the faces on there and also on this one i just got to remember to set this to a layer two as well so we got that right so that bar is lying nicely in there so what we can do with this is that we can force a leg length and the way we're going to do that is by adding an end modifier again so if we click on the bar and we go to end detail just load up our standard defaults again for the hook type, we're going to say nothing. We don't want a hook type. But what we want to do is for an adjustment type, we want to say we want to specify a leg length. And the leg length we want is, they want a full lap beyond that point. So that's 600 moles, less the cover. 
And, um, you know, that's a sort of a giveaway for us, you know, what the bar length is at the moment. So uh, what we can do is we can say a 700 is a lap for a 16 plus the 600. That gives us 1300. So if we make this a 1300 leg, just like that, and we hover over the end of this leg, like so, Tekla will force a 1300 there. And if we force, if we hover over this end of the leg, that will be a 1300 there. Now, if you, if you just look at the, at the this little 1300 this little magenta line actually gives you the bar leg dimension so there you can see it's exactly 1300 so that way we've actually you know uh, properly defined that bar um, what we can do now is we can do the same on the inside the only difference is on the inside if i go and plan again on the inside they are going from the inside of this bar all the way to the outside and on this one they're going from the inside of this bar all the way to the outside so we'll have to do the same there so again we go more point input We'll start there somewhere and we'll go all the way to the end there and across to there. We'll accept that. And again, for our range, we'll pick the bottom and the top of the of the uh, ligature that adds those two. And then while we're in the command, we might as well put in the other one before we, um, before we manipulate it. So what I'm gonna do is start there somewhere, all the way to the end there and then down accept that shape and again our range will be from there to there and that inserts that corner bar now we've got a lot of corner bars in here now we've just got to make sure that they don't clash with each other so so for this one again um on yeah i want this to be in a layer two so bring it right up against the ligatures and then i want this to be um you know sort of uh Actually, it won't let me do that because I have either not typed it in properly. That's correct. I didn't type it in properly. So once I've got that, what I can do with this bar is I'll unclick it again and just reselect it again. I've got to deal with this offset here. So let's increase the offset here to, we've got a 16 bar. So we've got to add at least 20 millimeters to it. So if we go 90 there and control A 90 there, so you can see how that's sort of putting it inside that one. And then it's traveling along the inside of this. And we've just got to look at the layer again. Now this layer has been picked up as two, so that's correct. That takes care of that bar. Now for this one here, what we can do is we can leave this one where it is yeah, except that yeah, we want to bring that into the second layer that brings it up against the ligature. So it's perfect there. But on the other side, yeah we're going to have a bit of trouble if we push it even further down if we push it down to 90 it's going to interfere with that bar so we'll leave it in plane with that and therefore we leave this one at the layer three so it's sort of inside the other one as you can see there so the only thing we need to do with these bars is also apply the um in detail so while i've got that one um, uh, um selected let me just reselect it while i've got it selected i can go in detail and I've still got the settings as before, so I can just hover over that, that adjusts that leg, you can see the 1300 there, and if we go to this side, and I hover over there, it adjusts that leg, and you can see the 1300 over there. And finally, what we can do is go to this, this leg here, as you can see, that's at 808 at the moment, that leg, so if we apply the end detail and keep the settings as before, we can hover over this end, that instantly changes it to 1300. We can do the same with this end here, and that changes it to 1300 too. So now all those bars are exactly the same. Um, and that pretty much takes care of that polybeam with the exception of the Z bars over here. So let's tackle them quickly. So with the Z bars, what we can do here is exactly the same process. We go to more, point input, linear, and in this case, we're still stuck with the 16s. Um, I'm just going to delete this for now to see what we get. I still want two bars. And it's as simple as, let's just draw the shape of the bar to start out with. So I'll click on the edge of the concrete, up to the corner, straight down to the bottom. And you'll see Tekla will give you a red, if it can't make sense of the shape, it will give you like a red line. Um, so obviously, I've done something wrong there. So let's just start again. It's a very good way to, to show you you've not clicked 
correctly it's not within a concrete line or so so i'll just look from the bottom so i can see the edge better so if i click there you can see that's now a, uh, a cyan line so tecla's happy with that if i come down and i hover over there it's still it's still a a magenta line so if i if i pull on to to that edge there that's the shape we want now obviously it's giving you red because i'm not in a sensible but if i hover over there you see it's magenta so once it's there i can middle mouse click it's happy with that and now it's asking for the range again and i can say this bar goes from this end to that end and just like that we've got our two z bars now what we what we need to do with these z bars is just to get them in the right location now if you look at this this is showing i'm in layer three and you can see it there the the stirrup is layer one the main bar there is two and the bar we've just detailed is three so what we can do is click on that face and say we want to force this into a layer two that will put the two bars on top of each other there this one is layer one which is correct i'm quite happy with that and then the one at the bottom i also want it to be in layer two and then to deal with this offset and the fact that they they are interfering with each other what we can do is just click away and reselect the bar and then just um, uh, tweak these offsets a bit and let's just go with a gut feel of 100 and you can see that sort of pushes the bar inward and you know um, I suppose you can make it smaller than that but it's not really important because on site they're probably going to put that in where it fits best anyway I mean you can click on it and, and try a 90 for instance bring it in by 10 moles and see how that looks that pushes it a bit closer to the other bar you know so you can play with it until it's good but you're always going to have some form of interference like there we've got got an ear but on site you'll probably find they'll just turn this leg around or they'll put that ear on the bottom or something like that you know so you know um, I wouldn't try and do a clash avoidance this because it's just not worth the time and on site they might even put these ears of the ligatures instead of this corner that you've picked they might pick a bottom corner or opposite corner so you don't know what's going to happen on site so now that we've got that z bars done what we want to do is we want to again control the leg distance so what i'm going to do is if i click on this one and we go to end detail while we still have our settings for our leg distance what yeah I, I on this one i just want to lap so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to say i want 700 because that's a lap for a 60 and i'm going to hover over over this leg here and you can see it's now applied you can see the 700 there. it's applied to 700 you can see it's actually projecting beyond the the face so the 700 there I'm not going to worry about the vertical because the vertical is, rec is correct. It's calculated by Tecla as per delays, and that's 522. For this leg here, however, it's 706. Now, my intent is to copy this to the opposite side, which means that these are going to interfere. So I want the top leg to be shorter. I'm going to make it 500, for instance. So again, if I click on our bar, and i go to end detail and instead of 700 i'm going to say this time i want a leg of 500 i'm going to hover over this edge that will pull it back so that will give me now a leg of 500 now what i can do is i can take this and i'll switch off the faces here for a minute i'll take this bar and i can say copy this bar uh, right click copy special linear and I'll select this inside edge here of the concrete back to this inside edge of the concrete. And that should be 600 in the Y, which is great. And I say copy. And that will just copy that same bar there for us. Now, we need to do the opposite here. Now, we don't have to do it from scratch. All we have to do is just tweak, tweak the uh, end modifier. So if I click on this end modifier, this one's got to be 500. So that misses that one. So there's no interference. And in this one, we want the full lap again. So if I click on this one, instead of 500, we want 700. And if I click that, we've got the full lap again. And just like that, we've dealt with the Z bar. So that pretty much takes care of that step. Now we do have another one, yeah, but we don't have to do all of that. So what we can do now is if we go in plan and we just find where our, that's our step, we, we click on our bars and maybe what I'll do is I'll select them before we actually go into plan. I'll click that one. And I'll click this one. So we've got our Z bar selected. We can go Control P to get it into plan, and then we'll use this corner as a as a copy rotate function to get that there too, because they are symmetrical. So what we can do is we can say right click, copy special rotation, and what I will do is pick that grid there as our center point. So we get our values there. We want one copy, one extra copy, and the rotation is 90 degrees. And if I say copy clear cancel and quit out of the command we should then see our 
Z bars also appear in this step in exactly the right location, which it does. And that pretty much takes care of all of those reinforcements over there. So the only thing we haven't done is this L over here. Now that is very, very quick. So we don't have any steps in that, so we can make use of what we've done here. So what we can do here is we can copy the ligatures, the bottom reinforcement, the side reinforcement, the top reinforcement, the other one. We can also do the same here. Copy this, um, this one. Sorry, I think I've, uh, I'll just do that again. Copy that, that edge, that edge, that top, and these leakages. I will also copy the bottom, the top. Uh, I must be careful not to that one. And I want to copy that one, and I also want to copy the ligatures. So that's all the main reinforcement without the corner bars. So what I can do with it, once I've got that, I can say right click, and I can say copy um, what I can do is say copy special to another object so they can adapt. So the source is going to be this and the destination is going to be this. So just like that, Tickler's actually figured out the lengths of the new beams and applied that exact strategy that we applied there to this one. Now, if I just click on that bar and I in, uh, um, switch on my leg faces again, you can see how Tickler has actually uh, smartly uh, figured out the new face that we wanted without actually adding this one again. It, it knew what we wanted, which is pretty uh, smart, to be quite honest. The only thing we need to do now is we need to um, add our uh, end modifiers that we had on this side. We've got to apply it on this side because we saw the clashes there now. Now that's pretty easy. What we can do is just um, pick both the top and the bottom bar. And what we can do is um, we can pick this modifier and say get the painter and then go over to the other side and then pick this modifier and that modifier and say apply the changes here and just like that we've got the juggle bars taken care of now one thing to to note that in a situation like this where we've got bars juggling on this side and that side that might be a bit of a constraint on site in terms of length if they didn't dig this thing out correctly and and a lot of the times you would want to put a, a a splitter you just want to split these in half like we did with this long reinforcement over here uh, you could split these and end up with a single uh, juggle column. But if you click on that bar and you right click and you say inquire, at the moment for the Australasia uh, environment, it's coming up with a shape code of a double J. You could have a single J if you split them, but it's still recognized and it's okay and the length isn't too bad. But just just bear in mind if this Restri uh, if there is a if you if you if you scared of tolerances on site and you and they might not fit that length in because the excavation was a hundred millimeter you know in too long or too short or whatever, put a put a splitter in yeah and and gives the guys a bit of grace on site to manipulate these bars a bit better. Okay, so now that we've got that done, all we need to do is deal with um, the ends here. Let me just see. It. Well, we've got no ends here, so what we can do yeah again end detail, just reset everything that we've got. Um, we don't want a hook at all. We've got nothing there, but as an adjustment type, we want an end offset, and the end offset is 300 mils again. And um, I'll click on that, and that takes care of, of that. I'll click on the top bars, engage the end offset, and click on that. Now, you could have said, George, you can just copy this, but the point here is just it's very quick just to use the command from scratch. You know, it almost takes less time than, than, than copying stuff around. So if I click on that and go end, click on this one, that extends that lot. And then at the bottom, we can click that one and say end modifier, hover over this end. And that extends that and that takes care of that. So in terms of this L, all we need to do now is copy our, our lacing bars. So we can copy this one. We can also select uh, this one. Yep. And then these outside ones. So that takes care of them. So what we can do here is we can purely say copy, copy, and we can pick this point, and we can hover over to there and say there, and just like that, it's taken care of it, and they're all there in exactly the same position. Take this taken care of, of everything for us in terms of our layering and our positioning, and that. 
pretty much concludes this whole foundation. Now we've, we've reinforced everything uh, and according to the engineer's detail, and that was 40, just less than 45 minutes um, as a tutorial and explaining what I'm doing. So if you if you can get proficient with this, you could check out these these foundations like that within a 30 minute, 30 minute uh, cycle very, very easily. And sometimes more doesn't mean more time. You can just copy around and, and, and make use of that functionality. But what I want to do just before I go is to say, let's perform a numbering on this. So we just get all the numbering right. So you can see our bases are all updated. I just want to show you how optimistic there is with this. Now I'm, I'm really putting my neck out there and I'm hoping that this will work, but let's give it a go anyway. If we go to reports, first of all, what I want to do is down with our selector, selector yeah. I want to go down and make sure that I'm only selecting rebar. And then what I want to do is I want to select only the rebar. So we only look at the rebar for now. And in our reports, what I'm going to do is I am just going to select like, for instance, a rebar list. Let's select the compact because that's really short. And then make sure because we've got an XSR, make sure that our options is on dialog and not on uh, with associated viewer. That's more for PDFs and, and so forth. So with report on that, I can say create a report from the selected. Now I've done this before if I say, um, um, overwrite, we can look at the full report. Now, what's interesting here is that if you look at that, there's only number, the bar mark, there's only 21 bars for all of that foundation. We ended up with a bending schedule with 21 bars. And you can see if you look at the quantity, uh, there's a lot. I mean, for instance, our HD bars, which is our ligatures, which is the same for all the foundations, there's 318 of them. So you can see just how well tech dealt with all of this. And more amazingly is if we look at our shape, all our shapes are known. We've not managed to create one non-standard shape, which is uh, pretty pretty good going. And we managed to um, detail 2.6 tons of reinforcement as a tutorial in 44 minutes, um, which is also pretty good if you think about the advantages. From this, you've got a 3D model. You can make an IFC. You can send it to an uh, architect or to a client for visualization. You can generate reports. You can send this as a... Um, you know, uh, RDX file, for instance, to ASA for fabrication. I mean, the whole job is done out of 45 minutes. No more processing after this. It's it's pretty pretty awesome. I'm 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 really a big uh, supporter and a fan of uh, tech the structures rebar rebar tools. I think it's it's the future. I uh, hope you enjoyed this and, um, you know, uh, keep an eye on future videos because we still have a long way to go. We still want to carry, you know, do piles, pile caps. We want to deal with column slabs, all kinds of slabs, stairs and so forth. So, um, you know, I hope you enjoy it. Enjoy, uh, looking, at, looking forward to the next video.